Researchers at the Seagraph Computer Graphics Conference saw something new in Meta's Starburst headset prototype, high dynamic range virtual reality with brightness at 20,000 nits. That's bright enough to simulate almost any indoor lighting. And while Starburst is not a product, it could be used to gauge how bright future VR headsets need to be on the path to what researchers call the visual Turing test. A test that when passed means VR headsets that are indistinguishable from reality. It's easy to predict the future when you've already seen it. We've seen for years our work on this half dome series. So accommodation and focus, we've pushed resolution, which you saw more recently, some of our work on that. Now you're seeing Starburst, but you aren't seeing necessarily the Venn diagram overlap of these things. We didn't actually expect to be able to explore this 20,000 nit territory. We thought maybe thousands of nits. No one's ever seen it before. It opens up new content. We can have really bright shafts of light that we just couldn't produce before. Today's HDR TVs, they're not 10,000 nits. We've seen 1,000 or 2,000 nits. Many years ago, I visited Dolby and I had the joy of seeing the 10,000 nit prototype. It stuck with me personally. We can keep increasing contrast, but VR may push back. It may say there's a fundamental limit on how high contrast can be. We have Fresnel lenses, we have refractive things, we have folded optics using polarization. Each of these have contrast limiting issues. Even a simple refractive lens doesn't absorb a lot of light, so you could probably get pretty bright, but in terms of contrast, any optical material will have imperfections and that'll cause scattering and haze. Everything fights with everything else, right? Pancake lenses, they're less optically efficient, but you can have this amazingly elegant and comfortable form factor. What do you as a user care most about? Do you care about comfort? Do you care about the aesthetics of the device? Do you care about the visual Turing test that I so care about? And what would you sacrifice to have it? Heavier headset, shorter battery life, do you want the headsets to be more compact? Perhaps that's why you would choose a pancake lens, but that will now come with a cost for the aspects of dynamic range and brightness. Are you gonna find an elegant way to make pancakes have higher efficiency? Maybe. Are you gonna crank up the backlight of the display? You could do that at what cost to the thermals of the system. And so Starburst doesn't answer these questions, it asks them. I think many individuals find that increase in realism with brightness is alluring. You remember those original wave of OLED-based displays and the blacks let you have a star field that's really compelling. The blackest black on this might not quite match uh, an OLED, but it's quite dark enough, so it's really the contrast of this lens that is limiting the system more than the contrast of the display. What could we do in five years? What could we do in 10 years knowing what we know today. And so those are things like the Mirror Lake concept you saw recently. Something where the components are not science fiction, the design seems valid as much as we can test it. I think you're catching us in this second chapter where we'll continue for many years plumbing out each of these individually. We haven't answered all the questions or even got others to ask the full questions on accommodation and resolution and HDR and distortion. We'll continue that. But I think you'll also see us try as best we can as a research team to pull it together. And so the first one we shared was Mirror Lake. I think the previous one was the Half Domes. Half Domes actually gave us wide field of view, high resolution, accommodation, all in one package. I learned from the Half Dome series, it can be many years to take an architecture where I can build one of them with my brilliant team, or five of them, and to really figure that out at scale. It's a grand challenge. It, making this is truly difficult. As a community, we may see a device that passes the visual Turing test within my career, hopefully early in my career, and it'll be because this SIGGRAPH community brought people together, brought optical scientists, display engineers, graphical scientists, perceptual scientists, makers, people who love content, people who are passionate about telling stories across companies, across academia, and we passed the Turing test together.